everybody, welcome back to another Tuesday grilling video. I know this sounds odd, but it's fall in most of America. And strangely enough for me, that makes me think of Jamaica. Odd, right? Well, when our kids grew up, Deb and I would always go on a vacation over Thanksgiving with friends of ours, so just adult couples, and we always had a great time. And some of my absolute favorite were going to the southwest coast of Jamaica, an area called Treasure Beach. And when we would go there every single time, the place we would stay at, they would do this wonderful, wonderful Jamaican uh, pumpkin soup. Phenomenal. We're going to do it a little different. We're going to go ahead and smoke the pumpkin first, impart a little bit more flavor, but the rest of it's going to be all Caribbean, all Jamaican style. Let's head on out to the smoker. All right, as I mentioned, we are going to make Jamaican style pumpkin soup. Ingredients are pretty simple. We're going to use a pumpkin, and I, I use the word pumpkin. Any kind of winter squash would work. You could actually use the uh, the pumpkin pie pumpkins, the small ones. You can use acorn squash. You can use butternut squash. Um, there's another one. I will put the name on it right up here. That's actually the one that they typically will use down in Jamaica because it grows there. I'm thinking it's calabasha, but I'm probably going to get that wrong. So I'll put something right up here that shows what it looks like and, um, and its actual pronunciation. Acorn squash is what they had at my local grocery store, so that's what we'll be using. This is probably about a pound and a half. Yeah. This is one of those recipes that it's a bit like look and feel and texture. So a pound to three pounds is probably fine. I'm going to use one large onion, and then I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use this here. This is called Caribbean Dreams Pumpkin Soup Mix. Uh, they have this. They also have one that's called, I know the 12-year-old in me likes to giggle, called cock soup. It's essentially a chicken broth-based soup. Now in these, this package actually comes with little noodles, almost like little vermicelli kind of things. I actually don't want those in here. So when we get ready to add this to the soup later, I'm going to do this through a, a sieve and I'm just going to let all the seasoning go through, but I'm going to keep those noodles because I don't want them in the soup. I want this to be a really smooth, creamy texture. And at the very end, we'll probably add in a little bit of cream. That's typically what you would do. If you don't have that, you could use milk. I'm actually going to use almond milk because that's what I have and I'm trying to keep it a little bit lower fat. Um, and we'll need some olive oil while we go ahead and um, roast the pumpkin. Typically in Jamaica, they don't actually roast the pumpkin. They'll cut it up in small pieces and they'll boil it um, until it's tender. But I want to impart some of that smoked flavor and really kind of kick it up a little bit. So um, let's go ahead and um, get started. The first thing I'm going to do is turn the grill on and I'm going to turn on my pellet smoker at about 325 to 350 degrees. Okay, with the grill turned on, all we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and cut this long ways. We want to cut it from the pointed end down to the stem, and we're going to lay the two halves out. We're going to roast them that way on the grill. I say that because we're also going to have to scoop the seeds out, but I wanted to show you what that orientation was. Now, keep in mind, these are, um, I mean, these are solid. These are strong, so you're going to have to use um, a little oomph here when you do it. As you can see, it looks a lot like, uh, like a carving pumpkin at Halloween. Uh, you can certainly save these seeds and roast them up. I think I might actually do that. I'll throw them on the grill and we'll roast those as well. I'm just going to get a spoon and we're going to scoop this out of here. All right, I just went ahead and grabbed a little, little tray here just to scoop these down into. You want to get some of the um, stringy parts of this out. I'm sure there's a better term than stringy parts, but you know what I mean by that. So the wind's blowing the opposite way, but you might be able to see the smoke starting to billow up here from the grill. It should probably go without saying, when we say pumpkin soup, what we don't mean is in November, in, uh, you know, in the grocery store where you see the big carving pumpkins that you take home to paint your faces on or make jack-o'-lanterns on them. Those are not, I repeat, they are not uh, cooking pumpkins. They're what they're called field pumpkins. You don't want one of those. So all we're going to do now is we're going to drizzle these with a little bit of olive oil. And I'm not even going to put salt and pepper or anything else on them. I'm really just going to let the smoke do its thing. And we just want to rub that olive oil all over the top of this. And that's to keep it from getting too brown or too dried out. And we're going to put them skin side down, so green side down, flesh side up. And we're just going to put them just off center of the actual fire pot, just because we don't want to scorch the bottom. Um, I'm going to put that at, like I said before, about 325 to 350 degrees, anywhere from 3 to 350 is fine in your smoker, depending on your brand. It may or may, not may or may not increment by 25 degrees at a time. Uh, and we're going to put them in there for about an hour to an hour and 45 minutes until a fork goes into the flesh, nice and tender. Uh, think of it almost the consistency of a, a little bit tougher than maybe a cooked potato when you're testing for a baked potato. So let's go ahead and get them on the grill. All right, so our pit is up to temperature, and I'm just going to go ahead and place these two right here with the skin side down, flesh side up. 
I'm doing it just a little bit off center of the fire pot. So we'll come back and check this in about an hour. And at that point in time, we will start prepping the rest of our ingredients. We're gonna chop up that onion into fairly large chunks. And we're gonna to start to cook it very, very low temperature in a, uh, a ceramic coated cast iron skillet, if you will, something, I mean, not, not skillet, pot, so that we can heat up our soup. Um, and I like using that one because I can actually, you know, actually saute or brown or braise things right in the bottom of it. But with this one, I'm just gonna put in that onion, keep it on a very low, low temperature with a little bit of uh, olive oil just to go ahead and get them translucent. I want them to sort of get aromatic and, and, and break down a little bit because we're gonna blend them at the end. We're gonna blend all of this. It's gonna be a, an absolute puree. I think I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna sift out my soup mix, just get that ready for later. And you can also put in a little bit of garlic or a little bit of ginger. Seasoning to taste here. Salt and pepper is the traditional thing that goes in here and nothing more. Uh, but heck, you could do anything from cinnamon to allspice. You know, you can make this more of a fall Thanksgiving tasting thing. I want it to be traditional Jamaican pumpkin soup, which is really just the, the pumpkin, the uh, pumpkin soup mix or the cock soup, right? The, the chicken bouillon or chicken stock, if you will. Um, and that's it, you know, blended really smooth. Some people grab, grab just a little bit of sour cream or cream on the top of it. Phenomenal soup. Well, I've got an hour to kill, so I'm gonna start prepping this stuff now. Um, <laughs> I hate to admit it, we are fans of Chinese takeout. You get these little containers with sauces or whatever in them. They're so convenient for stuff like this. Like I'm gonna chop up, um, I have about a thumb of ginger here. I'm just gonna cut, uh, cut that up real thinly sliced. Um, and at the end, after I saute the onions a little bit, I'll put those in there too. Just a little bit of flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my onion. Uh, I'm using a sweet onion, but obviously you can use any kind of onion, a yellow onion, white onion. I wouldn't use a red onion. I'll drop that in the fridge until we're ready to get these sauteed up. And you can kind of see the size of them here, right? You know, compare that to, um, you know, compare that to about the size of my, my thumb. It's about as wide as my finger to thumb width. I'm just going to go ahead and slice this ginger really thin here. That's it. Got this in the fridge. That's going to be ready to go ahead and saute in our pan after another hour, hour and a half when that pumpkin becomes tender. All right, all we have left to do is sift this in our prep work. Uh, we used to stay at a place called Unforgettable uh, and another one called Rainbow Tree Villa. Um, I remember there was Rambo and Miss Anne's. Rambo was the guy who would, would sort of t drive you or pick you up from the airport, take you to local uh, sites around town. And, and Anne would, you know, work in the house. She would make meals. She would clean up it, it, the rooms and stuff like, you know, housekeeping would almost in a hotel. Renting a house through like a vacation rentals by owner thing on the beach down in Jamaica is just phenomenal. But Miss Ann and Rambo were so nice. And we would go there and then like two years later, we might be back and we would be staying at another place down the street and we'd be walking back from a little local bar or beach and, and Rambo would pull up in the, in the car and like, hey Gil, like, shocking that they'd remember us. Miss Ann's, however, at Unforgettable was the place that it was unforgettable, just like the name of the place. Um, we've been there with my mom. We took Deb's parents there one time. Uh, and every single time, everybody, even those that are picky eaters, would love the pumpkin soup. So anyway, I'm reminiscing. <laughs> good memories, really good memories. As I mentioned before, this is the soup we want. It's just called uh, pumpkin soup mix. You'll also see some that have a chicken on it, say cock soup. Uh, both are going to be good. But as I mentioned, this, is, uh, this has some noodles in it that we don't want. So we're just going to use a wire mesh sieve here. All right, you can see what we've got left here. That is all of our seasoning that we're going to use. And I'm just going to close up this bowl and save that for a little later. All right, so I just have a pot here that I'm going to go ahead and do these onions in. It's been about an hour and 10 minutes. Those are looking really tender. I've checked them. Uh, they were pretty tender, believe it or not, in about 45 minutes. Um, I went ahead and turned the temperature all the way down just to a smoke setting and part a little bit more flavor because I wasn't quite ready to do this yet. <laughs> Get a little olive oil going in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this out here on this burner on the grill, but I will tell you, it's not always easy to do this because these get really hot. Got the ginger set aside. I'm just gonna put this on the table. All right. Just gonna get these going in here. Now I'm even gonna put a lid on it. Typically if you're sauteing onions, you wouldn't do that, right? But I don't want these to get crispy or really, um, really caramelized. I just want them to be soft and tender and translucent, release all that flavor. So if we want to do good Jamaican flavors, adding a little bit of thyme is always a great thing to do. Now, it'd be better if I had fresh thyme. I don't, so I'm just using some dried thyme here. These onions are starting to get a little soft, so I'm going to go ahead and put the ginger in now, too. Oh, 
We're gonna let this continue to cook down. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the, uh, the pumpkin or acorn squash out of the uh, smoker, and I'm gonna let that start to cool before we scoop the flesh out and get it into a blender. All right, so you'll see I'm down at about 180 degrees because I turned it down just a little while ago. But you can see just how good these are, and it's nice and soft. What you wanna do is give like that. Let's go ahead and pull these guys out of here. Those look good. Forgive the shadow line here, but we're just gonna go ahead and take this up. And again, see, we're not getting, yeah, these are actually, I need to turn this heat down just a little bit. But man, it smells phenomenal. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a pinch of our uh, actual seasoning mix for the soup in here, just to let it start really marinating it into those onions. All right, so as you saw, we went ahead and pulled these squash out. My onions are still going in the pot, but this makes it nice and easy. You can almost see where it's beginning to peel away from the skin, that's perfect. There's a lot of ways you could do this. You could try to just peel the skin. I find it's easiest just to use the spoon and go into that little section that's already starting to come loose and just scoop it right out of there. Um, it's amazing how easy that comes out. Now just be careful, it might still be pretty hot. I'm just scooping all the way around it and then right underneath. And what we wanna do, and by the way, if it comes out in chunks, that's fine. We're just gonna drop this into a blender. Let's go get our um, stock going again. We're gonna add a little bit of water to that, get it just enough of that uh, stock to make a base, and then we're gonna put it in here. We're gonna blend this up and puree it. Then we're gonna put it all back in a pot and heat it up. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in about two cups, maybe two and a half cups of water. Here. All right, we're gonna add in our soup mix. As soon as this heats up a little bit, we're just gonna put some of this into the blender, blend this, and if we need to add any more water, we can just add water right into the blender until we get a nice runny puree. I'm just gonna scoop the, uh, the onions into there because I, I don't know if I wanna use all this liquid, so, but I definitely wanna use all the onions. I think it's gonna be okay using all that liquid. All right, we're just gonna take this inside. We're gonna give this a nice blend. If we need to add some more water, we certainly will. Make sure you have a blender that's okay using uh, putting hot water in it. I think most of them are. We went ahead and added just a little bit of whole milk. You could use uh, cream or even non-fat milk. We just finished pureeing this, and we're now gonna go ahead and pour it into the pot to heat it up. Uh, I added a little bit more water until it had the texture I wanted, something that was relatively pourable like that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on low, and we'll just go ahead and let this uh, warm up a little bit. All right, we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, pumpkin soup, and the longer you let it simmer, the more the flavors will blend together. So I will say, I added a few spices off camera here just a minute ago. It needed a little bit more, so I seasoned it with salt and pepper. It still felt like it needed a little bit more, a uh, little bit more seasoning to it, and something to cut a little bit of the the squash or the pumpkin taste. So we put just a sprinkle of cinnamon and a sprinkle of uh, ground cloves in here, and that made a nice difference. It's uh, it kind of removed that. It definitely has a fall flavor and taste for sure. But serving this up with some kind of crusty bread, it's a meal in and of itself. Really, really good. And it certainly brings us back to our time in Jamaica. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have fun grilling. We'll see you next time. Bye y'all. Safe and happy grilling. We'll see you next Tuesday for another grilling video or Friday for our boating videos.